Hey everybody, this is Professor Corey and Professor Victoria. We are the Professor's Do Boys, and this is our buffer series, part three of our buffer series, where we're going to talk about doing some calculations on the pH of a buffer solution after we add strong acid or base. Yeah, so in this problem here, we're going to start out with, um, this is actually asking for the pH change. So we need to know what the, the buffer um, original buffer pH is, and then after we stress it, after we add a small amount, in this case of strong acid, what's our pH after that addition? And since we're asking for the pH change, we need to know um, the final minus an initial to get that, that change in pH. And the sign for that is important. So you do want to do a, a final minus initial, and if the if we're adding an acid, that pH should be going down and we'll have a negative change. If we're adding base, it would be uh, a positive change and we'd end up with, uh, with a positive delta um, pH. So like I always do, um, when I'm given a, a buffer system, I like to write the acid hydrolysis. So I took the acid from the buffer and wrote the reaction with water. This is an equilibrium. I've got my double arrows and this is producing the conjugate base. It helps me see where, what my, my buffer system is. And we also have the hydronium ion over here that I could use in an ice table to, to calculate a pH. But since we have a buffer system and we have amounts of both, uh, we can just use the Hasselbach equation to get our initial pH before anything's added. So whenever you have a significant amount of your, your acid and your conjugate base, you will be able to use this henderson hasselbach equation. So we need the pKa right. um, in this equation. So it's the pH equals the pKa of your acid, your weak acid. And then remember the pKa you can get from taking the negative log of your Ka, which was provided. So if you take the log of 3.5 times 10 to the minus 8th and then take the negative of that, that's where the 7.46 came from. So that's the pKa. And then you want to add the log of the ratio of your base to your acid. And when you are working with this Hedersen Hasselbach, you can have the molarity of your base divided by the molarity of your acid, or you can have it in moles. And in this case, we have the molarity. So we're just going to put that in there and solve for the pH before we add any HCl. All right, so we're adding HCl. That's a strong acid. And what we have to realize is acids react with bases. So I am going to write my reaction HCl, that's my strong acid, plus, now I've got my buffer system, that's the acid, and this is the base. It's going to react with the base. So I'm just going to put the ClO minus in here, and single arrow, because this is a strong acid, the H is going to go to the ClO minus making HClO minus, or making HClO, um, plus I'm going to have some chloride ion. Now, it's, it's pretty useful to write a net ionic equation for these, and remember that our strong acids we break apart, so this would really break apart into H plus plus Cl minus. Now this ClO minus would stay the same. The HClO is a weak acid, that would stay the same. And you can see we have a, a spectator ion here, so it's easier to write this as a net ionic equation. And, and remember, whenever you have H+, plus, you can write that as H3O+, plus as well, positive. So this is the neutralization of the added strong acid. That's the reaction. So it's going to affect the equilibrium that we have up above, but this is kind of a, a second reaction that's going on. And whenever you have your strong acid or your strong base reacting with your buffer, you want to write a mole table. And in this problem, it's a little bit easy because we have just one liter. But if you had any other volume, you would have to calculate and convert that molarity into moles. So in this case, we have the same number. So we start out with 0.25 moles of our conjugate base, and we are adding to it the 0 0.067 moles of our acid. So the since this is a single arrow, we are going to go to completion until one of our reactants runs out. So our smallest amount will run out first, and that's our added acid. And this is how the buffer works. So we've 
neutralized that added strong acid. And of course, our conjugate base there, our ClO minus, is going to go down by that amount. And what's produced is the other piece of our equilibrium, which is our strong, or sorry, our weak acid. So our weak base went down a little bit, completely neutralized that added acid, and our conjugate acid increased by a little bit. Now we can calculate our pH after that addition. And same thing, we're going to use our Henderson-Hasselbach. Now our new amounts are 0.183 and 0 0.506 same pKa because it's the same acid, um, it's the same weak acid conjugate base system. And there's our pH after. Now remember this, this problem wanted the pH change. So we're going to do final minus initial. So after we've added the acid minus our initial. Now we've added acid. We talked about in the very first video that these, there's a misconception that buffers um, resist all changes in pH, and it's not true. It does affect the, the pH a little bit when you add a strong acid or a strong base, but that buffer really um, tempers it. it. It buffers it. <laughs> and it did go down. It, you know, it and, and that's a good thing to check to make sure you, you didn't make a mistake. And you know, we added acid. We would expect that pH to go down. So we've got the change as a negative value, and that's okay. That negative is just telling us the direction of the change. So the negative implies that the pH did go down by 0 0.20 pH units. And one of the things I'd like to do, just for fun, is to look at what would happen if we put that many moles, 0 0.067 moles of HCl, in just plain water. I want to make one more point. Okay. That we were doing a mole table, and so our amounts here of our acid and our base were in moles, and that's okay to put moles in the Henderson-Hasselbach. We did not have to put that back into a molarity. If you were going to use your Ka expression, where you have your products over reactants, those need to be in molarities. But for your Henderson-Hasselbach, you can have either both be in molarity or both be just in moles. So I can write this as a net ionic equation. My H plus the Cl minus is going to be the spectator ion plus H2O going to H3O plus. And this is, this is really quite easy. Um, how many moles? We had 0 0.067 moles, 0 0.067. And this is going to go completely to hydronium ion, strong acid and water. Yep, and we were in one liter of solution. So again, he's just showing you how if we added this strong acid just to water, how would the pH change? Of course, water is going to start out as a pH of 7, and now we can see that, that all of that acid breaks apart into the hydronium ion, and we would have 0 0.067 molar H3O+. And to get the pH of that, that is our hydronium ion concentration, so the pH is the negative log of that. So we would get a, a pH of 1.17 from 7. So that's a, a very significant change compared to um, just going down by 0.2. So that's the power of the buffer. Yeah, that, I mean, you can really see, I mean, that amount of the HCl in, in just plain water with no buffering capacity really affects the pH, where our buffer was able to keep it to just a change of 0.2. All right, here's one for you to try. So pause the video and give this a try. Now, one thing that is a little bit different from the last problem that we did is this is in 500 milliliters. So when you get to your, your um, mole table, you are going to have to convert that to, to moles from molarity for both your acid and your base. But your initial um, Henderson-Hasselbach, your initial pH, you can just use those molarities as, as given. All right, so, uh, you know, I have a buffer system here. I, I like to write the acid hydrolysis. Just kind of grounds me, gets me started. Um, probably isn't totally necessary, but I like to do this. So my H from my acid goes to the H2O. I have ClO minus plus the hydronium ion. So we're looking for a pH change. So we need to know the um, pH before we add the strong base and the pH afterwards. So we have molarities here. 
we can just put these values, I can just write them up here. So that's that's molar, and the ClO minus is 0 0.650 molar. So I can calculate my initial pH with the Hasselbach equation. So I have a pKa of 7.46. 7 <clears throat> that's the negative log of the Ka, which was 3.5 times 10 to the minus 8 plus the log of your base over your acid. And again, this can be in molarity or in moles. We have molarity, so we'll use that. So our pH before is 7.53. Now we're adding a strong base. So our strong base is potassium hydroxide. The potassium's just a spectator ion. That's a neutral ion. So what we're really doing is adding OH minus to this buffer system. So since it is a base, it will react with our weak acid and it will be neutralized. It's going to completely be neutralized by that weak acid. The weak acid amount's gonna go down, our conjugate base will go up. And remember, we need a mole table. We need a mole table for these um, strong acid weak base or strong base weak acid additions. So we only have 500 milliliters, and that's 0.5 liters. So we're gonna multiply that by our molarity and get our number of moles of each of these. So. This is the HClO is 0.275 moles. And, and likewise, we do the same thing with our base. 0.65 is our molarity of our base times our 0.5 liters. And I'm just setting this up on the side. So I'm, I'm taking the, the volume in liters and then multiplying by the molarity. My liters cancel. I'm left with moles. 0.325 moles of ClO minus. So here's our mole table, and we're adding an amount of our strong base, and that's 0 0.041 moles. Since this is a single arrow, because we're, we have at least one of these as strong, it will go to completion, which means it will continue until one of our reactants runs out. So our smallest amount of our reactant is this hydroxide that was added. So both our reactants are going to go down by both of those numbers, and it completely neutralizes the hydroxide. So that's how the buffer works. And it does consume some of our acid, but we have plenty of weak acid and plenty of, of weak base to, to buffer these changes. So that goes down, got that 0.235, and then our conjugate base is produced, and we end up with 0.365. These are in moles, but we can use moles in our henderson hasselbach equation. So that's another advantage. <clears throat> we don't have to put them back into molarity. So our pH, same pKa, same buffer system. So we're going to have a different ratio of base over acid. Do that ratio, take the log of it, add 7.46 to it. We get 7.65 pH units after this addition. And we we're going to just think about that. We added a base, so we would expect our pH to go up a little bit. And our final minus initial pH, 7.65 minus our 7.53, gives us a change, a positive change of 1, a 0.12. So a small change, our buffer worked. And the pH increased. The positive sign um, for that value tells us that the pH did increase, and that makes sense because we're adding base. Adding base is going to increase the pH. Yeah. So hopefully you got that. If not, you can go back and watch again. That's the best part about these videos. And we are going to be continuing on with a even more kind of uh, complicated buffer questions and, and working through those in our future videos in this series. So come back for those. Have a great day.